we are victims in a sense of a colonial communication order it's not a question of misconceptions we don't have misconceptions of each other what we have is we have a colonial voice inside our head you know we need an asian perspective a very big possibility in modi's third term for china us uh, india relationship it may be the first time in human history we see top three economies china us india so for top three it should be very different this kind of triangle relationship is really triangle relationship us may be the most disturbing factor in this trilateral relations so you know, especially us government in the, even in the future or regarding the following five years still the critical uh, five years for out compete china now india has realized that usa is not dependable so i can see a little bit of leaning of india towards coming back to to asia side and all welcome everyone to global times round table on china india ties what are possible trajectories of China, India, U.S. triangle in Modi's third term in office? The, the trilateral relations is, of course, uneven, uneven, will be unevenly developed, but with the two bilateral relations uh, plunged into the bottom, like the Sino-Indian, Sino-U.S. But the Indian-U.S. relations will still have some possibility to get much more developed. U.S. may be the most disturbing factor in this trilateral relations. So, you know, especially U.S. government, in the, even in the future, or regarding the following five years, still the critical uh, five years for out-compete China. If that kind of strategy is still there, so the, the, the relations among the three countries will be uh, too much problems. A very big possibility in Modi's third term for China, US, uh, India relationship. It may be the first time in human history. We see top three economies, China, US, India. So for top three, it should be very different. This kind of triangle relationship is really triangle relationship. But till today, U.S. China India is not a real, really triangle relationship because India is in American side and not in between. So even yeah, very interesting. So it's mean in the future, maybe within five years, these three, these trilateral relationship become real triangle one. It's a very complex relationship, and especially India is in a very, very uh, tight spot. Uh, U.S. wants us to use. Uh, in in uh, South China Sea or against uh, uh, China uh, against China, uh, China want to, to be friends with India and we want to work together uh, for the BRI or for the Global South or for for uplifting Asia and all. So we are really confused and and we do not really know what to do. But to certain extent now India has realized that USA is not dependable. So I can see a little bit of leaning of India towards coming back to, to Asia side and all. But I think USA will later, sooner or later, will realize that the US cannot be the sole uh, superpower in the world and multilateral system is going to come. And for that probably U.S. would want a relationship with India, China, and other developed countries. And I think to start with, India, Indian civil society can start or promote a dialogue between China and, and, and USA to come up to certain things, at least uh, for some context, because India is very good at making and mending relationship among, among people and, and countries. Based on your understanding, do ordinary Indian people hold misconceptions about China? Despite the long end of colonialism, after all these years, the West dominates the media landscape. I, I, I would ask each of us, Professor Zhang, Professor Hu, you know, Professor Sakib, what's the media that you read? Do you read, uh, do you read the, the media in, let's say, Africa? Do you read Mail and Guardian? 
Do you read um, the newspapers from South America or do you read the Financial Times, the Wall Street Journal, the this, the that, watch CNN and so on? Um, we are victims, in a sense, of a colonial communication order. It's not a question of misconceptions. We don't have misconceptions of each other. What we have is we have a colonial voice inside our head. And we need, in that sense, to be a slightly more, um, you know, intentionally anti-colonial about how we consume news, how we understand each other, how we get to know the capacities of each other, you know, you travel to universities in both sides of the border and you'll see much more emphasis placed still on the West, on trying to understand the West. We're not trying to understand each other. We share a border. We are massive countries, the two largest demographic countries in the world. Keep wanting to understand what is happening in the United States. I agree, you should know that. But for God's sakes, the US is not the model. You know, we need an Asian perspective. And I think for that reason, I would say I'm very glad to be with two professors who are promoting India studies in China. And I'm very glad to be with, um, you know, Mr. Saqib, who's promoting um, the thought of China within India. And we need much more of this kind of collaboration, much more of this kind of seriousness of purpose.